All right. Welcome back, season 11 on the block, Joe Berfari, along with my boy. Let's do it up, boy inside at your service. Okay, uh, we want to talk about the Raptors and how their season's going to go this year. Raptors, disappointing last season, 41-41. and 41. Lost in the playing games of the Chicago Bulls. Disaster, I was there, I was there to say. Um, and had a big halftime lead, blew it. Fred Van Vliet's gone. Uh, team starting point guard, probably the longest tenured Raptor up until last year. So it's going to be a bit of a new look team with Fred gone. Uh, and Dennis Schroeder coming back after an impressive FIBA World Cup. In Germany, went a lot farther than people thought. So, Poyan, we're going to start with you. Let me know your thoughts on how you think this team's going to do this year and then also what Schroeder's impact is going to be with the club. All right, so ESPN's got them ranking at 36 wins and 46 losses. I think that's about where I would put them as well. I mean, last year they were an uh, even team, 41 and 41. I, I don't see how they've improved. The Raptors haven't improved. They've just kept their core together. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just Shooter is an amazing player. Like, I, I think he's a great player, not amazing. But, you know, will he do better than Fred Van Vliet? Maybe offensively he could be much better. But defensively, Fred was that guy. You know, he, I think he had the most deflections. In the NBA, he was a defensive first type of player. It was a dog, essentially, yeah. right? Uh, we don't know what we're going to give him, uh, Dennis Schroeder. Now, Dennis Schroeder, uh, awesome people. As you said, Jeremy won. You know, he was the leading cause of that, I think, man. He was, he was their focal point, their, their, their initiator. Now, you've got Dennis Schroeder at point guard. You've got your two wings with Scotty and OG. Then you got Pascal and you got Jakob Poto. That's your starting lineup. That's the starting lineup. Give or take, you're going to insert and, you know, move guys in and out. Gary Trent, you know, uh, you got Grady Dick. And then I guess you got Malachi Flynn if you want to run the two-point guard. Um, I just don't see that being anything too crazy you know like where is the well i mean you talked about espn maybe like throwing some shit at the raptors do you think they're throwing some shit or you think no. this is what the raptors are i think this is what the raptors are i think unless they make some in-season moves this is the team this is a mediocre team at best okay i was going to say the same thing and then the question with fred is you know you lose that let's call it leadership but Masai Ujiri had some quotes, I guess, at the media day saying about Pascal, what people think is Pascal and Fred, saying there will be no selfishness or, or no no selfish play this season. And that could be also on Nick Nurse, who's gone. We're going to talk about the new coach, Darko, that's him. So this team's going to be playing a little bit different. But you said it well, like there's not that many guys that are coming in. So Grady Dick gets drafted. The team needed shooting. He was arguably the best shooter in the draft. He comes in, hopefully, to provide some spacing. You still have Precious Achua, who we've talked about a few times. I was never high on him or OG, which we're going to get to maybe in a bit. But I guess at this point, OG is what he is. And what I said five years ago on this podcast, that he couldn't really dribble, blah, blah, blah. Nothing's really changed. He's still one of the best defenders in the league. So I don't yeah. want to throw shade at the guy who's calling a spade a spade. And he's a great shooter when he's wide open. You know what I mean? He's going to average you 18 points, maybe. Yeah, and, and that's, that's exactly what you're going to get out of OG. Now, what you're hoping for is now that you don't have that primary ball handler, well, you do, which is yeah. Dennis Schroeder, and you got Pascal, but, you know, now you can kind of give it to Scotty. Hey, you take up the ball. Let's see what you can do. Oh, oh gee, man. you do that. Move the ball. You know, with OG being the primary scorer, I just don't see anything to I, – I just don't see him creating his own shot. Yeah. I was going to say, is this offense going to get ugly? And that's that's the biggest point. And to Masai's point, you had a lot of selfishness. Guys kind of trying ball. to get their stats or whatever. It's, it, and that could be the case. But the problem is, is that other than Fred Van Fleet and Pascal. Uh, Pascal, who really was able to create their own shot. Now, you, do, you, you have Dennis Schroeder, which is a facilitator. You saw what he did with L.A. He kind of made his career come back a little bit. He played it much better, and I, and we can't knock him on that. Uh, what are you really going to get? That's the question. You know, is he a starting point guard? He's been a backup point guard. He showed you in FIBA that he can lead a team. Now, is that going to translate to NBA success? You know, he fumbled the bag once. Is he going to 
Pug will the starting position again. We don't know that. I I am betting on the fact that he won't. We're going to see an improved player. However, does he have the supporting cast that he needs for him to be successful, for Pascal to be successful? If you can look, you can see, you can basically make the argument that Pascal, OG, and Scotty Barnes are the same exact player. Just different sizes. Same body, similar bodies, I guess. Yes. Right? Different skill sets, strengths, and weaknesses, right? Like some guys, like Scotty still, like I saw his jumper, still looks rough. Yeah. And the thing I want to talk about, I don't know if you're done there, wrap it up. But, yeah, go ahead. Uh, with Scotty, it's just, we play basketball. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter what level you play basketball at. There's just some guys that are more comfortable with the ball in their hands, yeah. right? And whether that leads to scoring or not, it could be in our pickup league. Like there's some guys you get the ball, they'll go to work a few times. You're like, okay, I can go to that guy a few times. There's some guys that's like you have to give them roll to the rim, an easy layup where they don't have to make those decisions. And with Scotty, it's it, the thing I see with him is he's incredible dribbling the ball at his size. He can facilitate and make those passes. The jump shot's weak, and the shooting off the dribble is one thing I've talked about too. Like. You, for example, or anybody, like you can work on an OG, work on shooting that wide open three in the corner when you get it. No problem. And guys can learn at that. But when you're saying, hey, I need you to do a crossover, run around a pick, a guy's going to run at you like this, can you hit that shot? Very few guys in the league can. Yeah. And that's, I think, where fans, what, what, with OG, what I saw a long time ago, and even with Scotty, it's like, it doesn't mean that we're kind of hating on these guys. It's just, we need to see something, and it's, I don't know how likely it is to happen. I, I agree with you completely. I'm going to make one one more uh, comment here. I'm going to throw to you. The Raptors probably went from the slowest point guard in the league to arguably one of the quickest point guards in the league, going from Fred to Dennis. Right. Will that help the tempo at all, in your opinion? I think it will. I definitely think it will. Uh, the reason being is because the fact is, is that we're not a half-court playing offense and that's the biggest thing for the Raptors I think they've always needed to push the tempo they've always needed those easy buckets to get their offense kind of going and that's always what translated to us actually playing better putting up points putting up points pushing the pace, yeah, pushing the pace you know just making that easy bucket so you're not every play fighting to get, to get a basket, basket. Yeah, yeah. And, and you as you were talking about pick up ball the teams that just threw the ball out, fast break, got the points. They yeah. got ahead so fast, yeah. so And quick. then that also puts that other team struggling where it's like, we need to get back in this game as well, and, where and you're forcing your offense. Exactly. So we have the guys that we can push the pace, which are the, those 6'8", six, 6'9", six, lanky guys. It's just young guys that can run. And, and those are the guys that we need to facilitate and make sure that they are moving. And as you said, you know, your presses are two words. Is he going to take a step up this year? And Chris Boucher, what are you going to get from him? So inconsistent, but you paid him, you gave him an extension. Now, what are you going to get from him? Uh, Grady Dick, first round pick, awesome, you know, great shooter. What else is he going to provide mm -hmm. you? Is he going to be a defensive guy as well? Or is he going to be a defensive liability and just shoot that shot when he's open? Not, not to knock him for that. That's what you need these days yeah. as well. But yeah. what kind of player is he going to be? Gary Trent, is he going to step up in Contract his game? Contract year. Contract year, is he going to step up? Or is he going to just be that same streaky player that we're used to that, you know, is either going to give you four points one game, then give you 20 points the next, or is he going to be consistent throughout? Because I think even with him that you said that, and we'll talk about that quickly, is just this is where he kind of needs to make that decision. Do I want to be a guy that's maybe like a Jordan Clarkson, which is pretty much what he is, yes. a sixth man, instant offense, give you nothing else, bit of a selfish player, or do you want to play defense, show the league now in your contract year, then maybe get a contract worthy of a starting position? And I think that this is a big year for him to show that. I think the biggest knock with Gary Trent is, is that he does too much when we don't need him to like you don't need to take a step back three or a running three every yeah, possession. possession yes yeah, yeah. there's easy baskets Play there's running the around exactly and i think that was the biggest issue with him last year is that he was always trying force to force yeah. his shot and once you do that everybody knows there's no real translation into that and that's how you just keep going back into the points now you're Missed one possession, you missed the second possession, it adds up. And in the NBA, you can't make costly 
like uh, decisions and issues like that, right? In the NBA, it doesn't work. And then also, like I said, all basketball is very similar. So same when we play. Let's say there's a guy with us or this is a, we're, we're another guy on the Raptors, another guy on the starting five. When you see that guy taking selfish shots every possession, it kills your, your, your I guess, ambition, let's call it, on the court to Absolutely. kind of want to run around the screen, set a pick, do all that stuff. Because we play with a guy like that and it's like, the shots aren't going in. We know you think that you can hit all these shots, and you probably can, but it's not going down today. Give us something else. Exactly. Give us some defense. Get a steal. Go for the layup, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, closing thoughts on personnel of the Raptors before we get into anything else? Well, we got a new coach. Let's see what he's going to do. He's a developing coach. Let's see how the players translate that into their basketball success. Let's see how he makes his decisions. We saw Nick Nurse was a heavy starting five guy, like starting lineup, played more than... 30 so on minutes, you know, Fred Van Fleet, Piazza Siakam played the most minutes in the NBA within the last five years. It's not it even close. Them it wears them down. So, I mean, we don't really have uh, that issue, I hope, because we have, you know, a broader depth to say. And uh, let's see how that translates to NBA success. So, my closing thoughts are ESPN has us at 36 and 46. I think we're around the 40 to four, I think we're a 40 win team similar to last year. Similar to like last year. Team? I think we're close to 500, but not really. Maybe a 40 and 42, maybe a 39 and 43. But you know, I think we're not a 10 game difference of uh wins and losses. Okay, so, based on that, do they make the play in tournament because they're not a top six team? I think we're gonna be 11th or 12th place, yes. Okay, so they're in the play. Yes. So I'm going to go through, this is going to be the last thing we do before we sign off for today's episode. I'm going to run down through, in order, teams where ESPN has the standings uh, from top to bottom and ask you if they're better than them. Boston Celtics. <laughs> no, question your integrity right. here. No. Milwaukee. No. Cleveland. No. Philly. No. Miami. No. Knicks. No. Okay, now, now it's a bit interesting. These are teams projected to be in the play-in. Atlanta Hawks. No. Brooklyn Nets. Indiana Pacers. Yes. Orlando Magic. Yes. Chicago Bulls. Debatable. Charlotte. Yes. Detroit. No. I'm joking. Yes. <laughs> and Washington, obviously. Obviously. No. Okay, yes. so you pretty much out of those playing teams, that would be Atlanta, Brooklyn, Indy, Orlando. You're taking out Orlando, putting the Raptors in that conversation. Correct. And then, I guess, Chicago, you have teetering on that as well? Yes. So, if I'm going to debate any of those, it would be uh, Indiana. Um, they are a good team. Don't get me wrong. I think they did make some good players. I think uh, with Halliburton emerging this year. But I just don't see them doing it over the 82 games. Money Hill mean, might get traded too. If there's talk about that. In, that's that's the thing. Yeah. They brought in Bruce Brown. But like for me, it's always like when you've got a young team, you need them to play at least two, three years together, bring in the right vets to put around them and build off of that. Now, is that the team that Indiana has? I don't know. But if you told me that is Chicago better than Indiana as of today, I wouldn't. I, I, I think, you think they are. Yeah, I think Chicago is better when you got Zach Levine, your Kid Rose, and then your Vucevic. I think those as a package are way better than Halliburton, Miles Turner, and Buddy Heald, or whoever the third starter you want to put. I'd Bruce pick. Brown. I went through the lineup Tice, Obi Toppin, who we talked about, Isaiah Jackson. Yeah, you got Benedict Matherin. You got, you know, you got players. Don't get me wrong, but are they better than Chicago? I just don't know, and I don't see that. And and Nemhard, the Canadian last year, who who did kill it when he was in. Yeah, and he looked was absolutely awesome. incredible. Yeah, right? really played really so well. they they do have some guys there. Uh, it's gonna yeah, like you said, it's gonna be tough. Miles Turner. Um, For me, I'm Smith. big on continuity. Uh, I will say that as good as the Raptors are, I think the reason why they will be successful is because they have their core team together and they know how each other plays, so it won't be that big of a difference. However, on top of saying that, though, is is Indiana played with the same team for the past two, three years? No, they just, you know, they've had injuries. Miles Turner was out. You had... Sabonis was out a lot. No, Sabonis is in Sacramento. No, but I'm saying he was out previously. Oh, yeah, previously. Like the continuity. Yes, the continuity. Yeah. So there's always guys in and out. There's yeah. always guys in and out in that lineup, and you had that trade, and so with that, I'm saying, like, are do you that core bank guys. on the core of guys? Okay. Yes. So Well, something like you said with Sacramento, how they kind of... They had some core guys, but they also brought in a lot of new guys and took yes. that next step. Um, and then I guess the last thing I was going to talk about, too, was... 
um, the Raptors coaching staff, I guess what we kind of will expect from them, we won't get into that now, but more so the direction of the team will end on that. I've never been, we've had podcasts from a long time ago with Lamar, Igor, all the Zane, all kinds of guys, talk about the direction of the team. And the thing that's always kind of stumbled me is I've always been, as most people should be, championship or bust. You're either building towards a championship or after you kind of got there, your guys are getting old, you trade them down, get assets like OKC has done great, a lot of these young teams. You get draft picks, you bring those guys, and then you build up. The Raptors now, like they've been in a long time, are in no man's land. And I said that last year. I did not want this team competing for a play-in spot back-to-back years for no reason to lose to the Bulls. Or maybe you beat a team like Indiana and you get smoked by a boss in the first round. Do you, as a Raptors fan or two Raptors fans, would you not prefer to trade some guys? And I know nobody wants to trade any guy that they've been with the team because we love them. OG Pascal. But with Pascal not signing that extension, they're going to play the season though, which we've already lost Fred for nothing. Do you, would you rather see guys like OG and Pascal or at least one of them move to get actual assets back and draft picks so you can get a top seven, top five draft pick next year and get another guy like Scotty, hopefully a little bit further down the road? Or do you want to kind of, oh, you know, you lose Pascal for nothing, you have your own pick and kind of be teetering in this 500 land with no future? Uh, that's a very good valid point, very good question. If I'm the Raptors, I sell, I sell, I sell. And that's just where I stand. I know a lot of Raptors fans don't want to hear that, but you have the big stars out of the game now. You had a chance of getting Damian Lillard. Now, if we had Damian Lillard, we're different conversation. A different conversation, right? right? Yeah, exactly. We don't have that guy. We don't have our Kawhi. We don't have, you know, the the, the stars. You don't have your Jokic's. You don't have your uh, Giannis's. You know, we don't have that star player that we can. They don't have a Tatum. They don't have a Shea. They don't have you a know, You don't have that guy. And these are the issue. Like Siakam, as amazing of a player he is. He's a notch he's below. A, he's a notch yeah, below yeah. all of those guys, right? Now you need a superstar on your team now. Are we a player away from becoming that competitive? I don't know. Like if you were the Raptors, what kind of player would you go out for? Would you go out for a James Harden and bring a James Harden to our team? Besides never liked him either. So no, uh, I yeah. mean, that's the question yeah. I would like to ask. Like yeah, if, if you're a trade away from becoming that level, but you're not making that trade. But you're not making the move. What are you really doing? So what are you doing? Exactly. So you'd rather sell off and build your assets you know, look at what San Antonio said. They've been championship for how long? You think of San years. Antonio and you years. remember yeah. all those yeah. championship years. But they, they're realizing, listen, and we are not that team anymore. So now we got to build through the draft. And they've done excellent so far. Look, they just got Weapon Yama. You know, before that, Vassell. We're talking about Vassell, yeah, yeah, Kelvin yeah, Johnson. Like, like, at least there's pieces where they're like guys are kind of trying to build. Then you'll get that. veterans to come in and exactly. kind of sprinkle them in. Exactly. Now, what about have the Raptors done? None of that, None right? Of that. Like, the only kind of thing you have to show for it is Scotty, which you know, the jury's still out on, and I do like him a lot, let's be honest. But I don't think, I think his superstar ceiling is probably not there. I mean, you want to see be what he can grow to, right? It's still early in his career. And he's playing now, he played for a different coach. I think now this coach is actually going to be better for him as a development coach, as someone that actually looks into players, play, talks to them one-on-one -on -one and develops to their type of style yeah. and plays their, to their strengths. I think that's something that the Raptors were lacking before. Not a knock on Nick Nurse. I think he's a wonderful coach. I think he's a championship coach. I just think his time with the Raptors was yeah. done. Yeah. And uh, especially with not having Fred Van Fleet, I think it was time for, you know, that next new voice, next chapter. So let's see. I think uh, I think it'll be exciting. I think uh, it's an exciting season again. Whether or not that translates to anything, we'll see. But uh, to answer your question, I would sell. But that only depends, and it's never too late. Let's see where we are by the draft deadline by February. We'll see where we are, and I think we can make a decision by then. Yeah, and you hope to because last year there was rumors that OG was going to go for like three first round picks. They didn't accept it. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're reading between the lines, OG doesn't want to be here long term. Yeah. And Pascal, based on the fact they haven't offered him that extension, you don't want to lose two guys of that caliber for nothing. Absolutely. That's going to wrap up today's episode for Raptors uh, here on On the Block. Joe and Poyan, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks.